Welcome to Grace Sunday Nights. My name is Josh Gallagher, and it is a privilege to have you here as we are getting ready to start our brand new series entitled The Giving Tree. This series is partially based on the book by Shel Silverstein called The Giving Tree. And in this book, we find how we can live a very powerful life when we're willing to be generous. But before we get into all of that, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank everyone for tuning in online. We know that this is going to be a great series that can change your whole view and the way you live your life in the area of generosity. But before we get started, how many of you like pop quizzes? Huh? None. Okay, well, we're going to have a pop quiz, and it's going to be a math pop quiz. Get out your cell phones. If you know the answer to this math problem, I want you to text it in. Here it is. If you're the first to text in with the answer to this problem... You receive a free gift, complimentary of Grace Sunday Nights. First person that texts in the answer to 575-347-1360 will win this marvelous prize. This will be posted online later, so if you need to go back and look at it, you can. I put this up here because when we talk about the concept of generosity, this is what we think of. For some of you in this room right now, you're looking at this problem, you're like, I've got it. I know what it is. You're already thinking it out in your head. You're doing the math and probably getting ready to text in. Others of you, you didn't even pull out your cell phone. Because you're like, there is no way I'm going to understand any of this. I'm not even going to try. This is how a lot of us approach generosity. We think it's just for a small group of people that really get it. And the rest of us, we just kind of throw our hands in the air and say, well, I'm not one of those select few, so there's no hope in even trying. The problem is, generosity isn't that complicated. It's actually very simple. But we make it complicated because we have a lot of faulty equations inside of our mind about how generosity works. Here's what I need you to do. Imagine with me you're a kid, and you've somehow came into some money, either it was birthday money, Christmas money, you worked for it, but you have enough money to finally buy that bike that you've been dreaming about basically your whole life, all nine years that you've been alive. You're dreaming about that bike, you finally have enough money. And then one day, right before you're getting ready to buy that bike, your parents come up to you and say, I know you've been saving that money, but your brother or your sister could really use a new set of clothes. Or there's someone here that could really use some of that money. And you think to yourself, (laughs) there's no way. This is my money, and I'm going to use it how I want to. And in this scenario, we understand this very simply, because this is what that equation looks like. It looks like this. I win, and you lose. No, I am keeping my money. You're getting nothing. But we understand that in some, some instances, it's selfishness. Not that it's always bad, but I win and you lose. But let's say your parents really lay it on thick. And they're like, well, you know, your brother goes to school every day just in his underwear, and that's not good. The other kids laugh at him. So you feel really guilty, and you give part of your bicycle money to your parents. And they say, oh, you're so generous. And in your mind, you're thinking, okay, this is what it means to be generous. You win, I lose. You get clothes, but I don't get a bike. And your parents tell you, you're so generous. And this is how we think generosity works. Well, it's not. This kind of scenario where you win and I lose, this is really what goes on in your mind. You're thinking, that was careless. I had all of this money. I knew what I wanted to get and you got something, and I didn't. That was careless. That wasn't generous. A lot of you are thinking probably right now, no, wait, this is generosity, isn't it? It's not. You win, I lose is not generous. This is the true equation for what it means to be generous. It's right here. You win, and I win. That equals generosity. That's what it means to be generous. This equation is logical, it's practical, and it's biblical. It's logical because 
if I'm going to help someone else win, and in return I am also going to win, I'm willing to maybe be a little bit more generous. It's practical because when I give, I know in some way or some form it's going to be given back to me. And last, it's biblical. This equation is found in a lot of places in the Bible. I only have time to share just a couple with you. Here's the first one that I want to share with you. It comes from Acts 20. It says, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Most of you know who Jesus is, pretty popular guy. Here's what he said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus is setting up a win-win scenario. He says, if you give, yes, the person you're giving to is going to win, but it's even more blessed, or you're also going to win if you're willing to give. And one of the wisest men that ever lived, his name was Solomon, he had this to say in Proverbs. Look at what he says. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Now, if this guy was so smart and he understood generosity, he's hitting on something here that we need to pay attention to. He's not saying, okay, a generous person will suffer much loss. Nope. He's saying a generous person will prosper, and he who refreshes others will also be refreshed. What is he saying? It's a win-win. And later, Paul, when he's talking to the Philippians, he says this about Jesus. This is a great example of a win-win situation for generosity. This is what he says. Though he was God, referring to Jesus, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges that he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. First here, Paul is saying, look, Jesus came, and when he came and he died, humanity won. Because now we can have our sins forgiven, and our relationship with God can be restored. We win. But he doesn't stop there. He goes on in verse 9. Look at what he says next. Therefore, God elevated him to the highest place of honor and gave him the name above all of their names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We know we win. Humanity wins. But who else wins? Jesus. God elevated him to the highest position. And one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For whose glory? God the Father's. Generosity is not a you win and I lose situation. Mm -mm. You win and I win. That's what it means to be generous. So this is the very simple equation that I want you to remember. You win plus I win. This is what it means to be generous. Now, a couple cautions before we go on too far. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme, okay? Some, of, some people want to take this idea of generosity, and they want to play what I like to call the God gambling game. And what they'll do is they say, okay, they go up to the God slot machine, they take out a $100 bill, and they put in $100 into the generosity slot machine. They pull the lever, and they expect to get $1,000 back. That's not generosity. That's called gambling. Good luck with that. The caution is, just because you invest something in someone else doesn't mean you're going to get the exact same return. You might invest time, and you might be generous with your time. That doesn't mean God's going to give you more time. Or you might invest a large amount of money. That doesn't mean God's going to give you a large amount of money. But he will reward you in his time. Guaranteed. And the last caution is, the primary focus whenever you're being generous is always someone else. Your reward will come, but it's secondary. It's not primary. So true generosity is when you understand, I get to help someone else win, but in return, in some way, I am also going to win. That's what it means to be generous. It's logical. 
It's practical, and it's biblical. And it will change the way you live your life if you'll let it. So now that we know what it means to be generous, I want to look at a couple guidelines of how we can live this out in our everyday life. Because even if we understand these equations, we still have a lot of hesitancy. I understand that, you understand that, because even as I talk about generosity, probably a lot of you are thinking right now, well, I can't, because of this, 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 and this. Well, let's talk about some of those things very briefly here. And to help us do that, we're gonna look at 2 Corinthians 8, one through five. If you have a dark blue Bible in front of you, it's on page 1801. If you have a light blue Bible, it's on page 1760. Or if you have a smartphone or an iPad, feel free to pull that out, and we're gonna look at this passage. Because within this passage, there are keys that we need to understand if we're going to live a generous life. But before we get in there, we're going to look at some more generous math equations. Here's the first one we're going to look at. What plus what plus what equals circumstances where I can be generous? For a lot of us, we may be put in here when I have my my retirement fully funded. And when the kids are out of college and they're finally on their own and they're supplying their own needs, it's coming one day, parents, I promise. It will come. And then I'm making at least six figures. Those are circumstances, then I can be generous. Or maybe you're waiting for your circumstances to look a little bit more like this before you're generous. What do you say? I just say hi, Rebecca. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, what, what, do you, what do you think you about doing with all that, <laughs> that wealth? What do you say? I just say hi, Rebecca. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, what, what, do you, what do you think you about doing with all that, <laughs> that wealth that you've got? You're not going to live forever, and, and uh, you really think your, your children will be better off if they each have you know, 500 million or a billion dollars, and they never have to do anything the rest of their lives. The pledge is not a legally binding document, and those who take it can give today or put it in their will. The newest member to join the pledge is just 43 years old. Hamdi Yulakaya, founder of Chobani Yogurt, came to the U.S. from Turkey with just $3,000 in his pocket. Today, he has an estimated worth of $1.4 billion. When I get to know what Bill Gates do and Warren Buffett and, you know, the people um, who are in the philanthropy, I wanted to do it the same way that they did. His charity, Tent, will go towards helping refugees around the world. Every three seconds, uh, one person is displaced. You can save life. You can make somebody's life better. Um, why, why would put it in somewhere and wait for 50 years and 70 years while you can do it right now? The giving pledge is a pledge where billionaires say, I'm going to pledge to give away at least half of my income to nonprofit organizations or to philanthropy. And we look at those things, and I want to be the first to admit, that is amazing that those people are willing to do that. But we have a spectrum, usually in our minds. And let's imagine that Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are over here with their billions of dollars in the giving pledge. We have a line inside of our heads And inside of our heads, that line maybe isn't over here, but it's pretty close. The problem is that we always put ourselves over here. And we think when I eventually hit or cross that imaginary line, I'll be able to be generous. The only problem with that is we continue to live our lives. That line keeps moving. Well, I can't give now because... Uh, I'm not quite making enough. I can't give now because my retirement isn't fully funded. I can't give now. I have college to pay for. I can't give now because of this. I can't give now because of this. And we keep moving the line. But we know, hey, one day when I'm kind of like Warren Buffett, I can be generous. Well, as we look at that spectrum, I want to share with you an example that comes from 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5. And the example we're going to be looking at is from the Macedonian churches. And they show us what it means to have the right circumstances to be generous. Paul's writing a letter to the church in Corinth. And halfway through this letter, he wants to take a collection for the church in Jerusalem. He's taking this collection because the church is going through a famine. And he is collecting funds to help this church survive. And so he's going to talk to the church in Corinth about what the Macedonian churches already did. He starts off in verse 1. 2 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 1. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. 
The Macedonian churches at this point, they're basically still church plants. They don't have their feet under them very much. They've only been doing this for maybe a couple years, but God has done something extraordinary among them. And Paul's going to tell the Corinthian church what it is. Verse 2. In the midst of severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Oh, what? If you would have asked the Macedonian churches, what are the right circumstances to give? Here's what they would have said. When you have trials and you have joy and you're in the middle of poverty, that's the perfect circumstance for you to give. Now, if we put that on our spectrum, we have Warren Buffett over here. We have us somewhere in the middle in our imaginary line. The Macedonian churches are saying, no, the real line, right here. If you're in poverty or you're going through trials, you can still be generous. And so they take the line from here by their example, and they put it way back here. And the reason they could do this was they understood that when I give, you win, and I win. So the circumstances are always right for us to be generous. But that's not the only thing we need to look at. Let's look at this one. When's the right timing to give? When's the right timing? For a lot of us, we would probably put in these blanks. Whoop, go ahead and go back. Right now, we'd probably put in those blanks. We would probably put later and when I have more. It was J.D. Rockefeller when he was asked, hey, when is enough money enough? And he said, when you have just a little bit more. And isn't that what we do when we think about, okay, when am I going to give? Well, when it's later and when I have a little bit more. Well, the Macedonian churches, they're going to give us an example of what it means to have the right timing of when, it's, when it is to be generous. Verse 3, here's what it says. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. So the timing for the Macedonian churches was right now with what I have. Right now with what I have. All of us have three things in common that are at our disposal as we speak. You have time. We all get the same amount of time. It's just a matter of what you do with it. We all have talents. We're all good at something. We have natural abilities or maybe God-given abilities that are unique to every single one of us. We all have an ability. And the last one, we all have some form of treasure. We all have either a money or physical objects that we own. That's treasure. If God wants you to be generous, you have everything you need to be generous right now. Because did you notice in the passage, it didn't mention once the amount that those churches gave. It just said that they were willing to give. And it's the same thing with us. It doesn't matter if you can donate $2 out of the $5 that you have in your account right now. That's generous. Or if you have $20,000 saved away right now and you give $19,000, it doesn't matter. It's being generous. We all have time, we all have talent, and we all have treasure. And you can choose to be generous with those things right now. You don't have to wait till you have more. And the final thing that we need to look at, what's the object? Why are we generous? Whenever we're generous towards somebody or something, there's a motivation and there is a reason behind it. And the Macedonian churches are going to give us our final example of what it means to have the right object when we're generous. It says this in verse 4. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. What was their formula? Who was their object? First, it was God. Then it was others. And does this look familiar? They understand even themselves would benefit from this. This was the motivation of why they were generous. God, others, and themselves. And when they put all of that together, they had the timing, 
They had the circumstances and they had the object and the motivation they needed to be generous. While they were in poverty and they were facing trials, they were still generous with what they had. This week, I want to share with you some very powerful stories about people that have been generous with their lives. Modern day examples and even examples in the Bible. And one of my favorite ones that I'm going to share this with you this week is about a prostitute. Yes, you heard me right. A prostitute was extremely generous with what she had. And when she was generous, she won and someone else won in the process. It's an amazing story, and you're going to be able to hear about it in our consistent connection. Here at Grace Sunday Nights, we don't want to just motivate you. We also want to move you. Because it's great to come together and be motivated in a certain area. But if it doesn't lead to action, we're selling ourselves short. And we want to motivate and move you here, but we also want to motivate and move you when you're out there. First, let's start in here. Tonight, you're going to have an opportunity to be generous. And here's how you can be generous. We're calling it generous opportunities. And these are ways that you can be generous with your time. We're not asking for your money, but maybe a little bit of your time. These are six areas here at Grace Sunday Nights where we could use some people to help get involved with what we're doing here. And in just a couple minutes, I'm going to release you out for a 15 after party in the lobby. We have free food that's available to you to just hang out, get to know people. But there's also going to be these different areas. And in each of these areas, there's going to be leaders there that would love to help get you any information that you might have about media, worship, coffee, or anything like that. And they're going to be wearing these name tags. You don't have to sign up for anything, but you can at least get more information. You could sign up to serve once every other month. You could serve once a month, once every other week, whatever you wanted to do. But the Macedonian churches sacrificed for people they had never met in Jerusalem or never would meet. But they understood that they were a part of something bigger than themselves, that this isn't just about me. I'm going to sacrifice of myself so I can help others. So tonight, maybe one way that you can be moving forward in this area of generosity is start volunteering your time. And if you've benefited in any way from Grace Sunday Nights, I hope you can understand that this is about us. And to make this all happen, it takes people coming together, understanding this is something bigger than myself. And because of that, I'm willing to give of my time. Whether that's through set up or tear down, or whether that's coffee, whether that's prayer, but every single volunteer here has an understanding that this isn't just about me, but this is about us. So that's one way that you can move in here. But more importantly than that, we want to motivate you and move you when you're out there. Do you know you live 99.5% of your life outside of this building? We want to crack into that 99.5%. And here's the reason why. It's out there you're living your life. It's out there you're choosing if you're going to be generous or not. It's out there you're making decisions. And we want to encourage you on this journey. And here's how we'd like to do that. You can sign up for what we call the consistent connection. Here's how it works. For however many days you sign up, you're going to receive a text message. And on that text message, it's going to have basically three parts. It's going to have a Bible passage that you can read, a simple prayer that you can pray, and then an application step in this whole concept of generosity. And every, other, every once in a while, also throw in a video clip, something to motivate you and move you in this whole area of generosity. So if you want to sign up for something like that, here's what you do. Take out your cell phone, text into the number 81010. Then you can sign up for two days a week, four days a week, or six days a week. If you do two days a week, you're going to receive a text message for Tuesday and Thursday. If you do four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. If you do six days, Monday through Saturday. And all you have to do is type in the message line, once you put this in the number line, at Generous 2, if you want two days a week, at Generous 4, if you want four, at Generous 6, if you want all six. And every night, every night, before that day, so on Monday night, if you sign up for two, for two days, on Monday night, you're going to get a text message for your Tuesday consistent connection. This is our way to help you live out what it means to be generous as we go through this series. If it's your first time signing up for this service, it's going to ask you some questions about if you're a parent or an adult. Don't worry about it. Just say, hey, I'm, a, I'm an adult, not a student. And then it's going to encourage you to maybe download the app. Don't worry. You don't have to do that. I share all of this with you 
because this, for us, is free. We like free around here, and it's a free app that I've found, but there's just a couple hoops right at the beginning that you need to jump through, but once you get through those, you'll be good to go, and you'll be signed up for the consistent connection throughout this whole series. And for every person that engages with our consistent connection throughout this series, we're gonna make a $5 donation back into this community. Last series we did this, we donated $300 to local schools and nonprofit organizations because we believe in this whole concept of being generous. That when we sacrifice for schools in Roswell, when we sacrifice for other community organizations, we win and Roswell wins. So this is a topic that we don't just talk about, we live. And so every person that signs up in any one of these day amounts, two, four, or six, we're gonna make a $5 donation back into this community. And so I would encourage you, go ahead, pull out your cell phones, and you can sign up for that. I have one final clip for you to look at. And as you're getting ready to look at this clip, I want you to ask yourself this question throughout the whole clip. Who wins? Because in this clip, it's an excerpt from the book, The Giving Tree. And it's just the opening couple pages but right away from the beginning of this book, we see what it means to be generous. Once there was a boy, and a tree, and the tree loved the little boy. Because every day he'd run to her and gather her leaves and swing on her branches, eat her apples, and take a nap under her shade. And he too loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. Who won? The boy and the tree because the boy loved the tree, and the tree was happy. Generosity. It's not that complicated. It's as simple as understanding, I want to help someone else win, and in the process, I'm also going to win. And throughout this series, we're going to flesh out more what it means to be generous with everything that God has given to us. And the reason why is because I want you to win at this life. And if you want to win, you need to learn how to be generous.